Hey bakers, today we're gonna make cranberry walnut sourdough bread from the perfect loaf. Stay tuned to find out how to make it. Let's bake. Did I leave the oven light on? I wasn't planning on doing another recipe from the perfect loaf so fast, but my wife really liked the sourdough pumpkin dinner rolls and she insisted on trying the cranberry walnut sourdough bread. So let's head back over to TPL and take a look at this recipe. I'll post a link to it down below in the description. All right, this recipe has three main parts, the Levon, the dough, and toasted walnuts. For the Levon, 40 grams of bread flour, 40 grams of whole rye flour, 80 grams of water, eight grams of starter. And for the dough, for the auto lease step, we need 600 grams of bread flour, 120 grams of whole wheat flour, 520 grams of water. And for the rest of the dough, we need 24 grams of walnut oil, 80 grams of water, 15 grams of sea salt, and the 168 grams of Levant. Last but not least, for the inclusions, we need 160 grams of toasted walnuts and 112 grams of dried cranberries. Before we get the Levant and walnuts ready, do me a favor, please like and subscribe for more great content from me. Also, stick around to the end and we'll go over some pro tips to help with your baking. All right, today we're gonna just uh, jump right on into the mixing step. I pre-prepare both the uh, walnuts in this case and also the Levon. I always pre-measure my ingredients as well, so uh, that's ready to go for this mix. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna put the bread flour, the whole wheat flour, and the auto lease water into the mix, and then we're gonna auto uh, mix that all together, and then we're gonna auto lease for about an hour and then we'll move on to the next step after that. So let's get going with the flour. Now in this case, um, I didn't want to use an even larger container so I have it split up a little into two containers and uh, the whole wheat and the bread flour are already a little bit mixed but what I want to do today is actually grab my spatula and just do a dry mix to make sure that they are both really mixed together and uh, you know thoroughly uh, distributed that the whole wheat is distributed thoroughly throughout the bread flour so that is what I'm doing right now with the spatula just to get that you know nice and uh, just nice and handled all right all right next up we're gonna put the auto lease water in so I did split the um, the water into two sections. There's uh, 520 grams for auto lease and 80 for the rest of the mix later. So this is just the 520 for the auto lease. Oh, you may have noticed, uh, you know, in a lot of my videos, I, I probably am using the black mixing bowl. Um, I didn't think it was going to be big enough for this because this is pretty much a, a double loaf. So, uh, oops, uh, let's see if I can recover some of that. This is why I keep the workbench clean, by the way. <laughs> um, anyway, as I was saying, the, uh, the black mixing bowl that I normally use, which uh, I think just makes it a little easier to see things on camera, it's a little small and this is a double loaf. So uh, what you have here is my larger, much larger glass Pyrex bowl. Um, which may actually help the side cam a little bit too. <laughs> uh, just get a little better visual on stuff. Um, the uh, I do have stainless steel mixing bowls as well, but they're very reflective, so I don't like to use those on camera too much, uh, even though they're way lighter than this one. All right, so as you can see, it starts off very dry, and it can be a little challenging with the spatula, so sometimes I just do this. I just get my hand in there and just start mixing it by hand because it just ends up being easier. Um, but what you want to do is just make sure you get everything incorporated so that it's just a big clump, even if it's a bit shaggy. That's not too bad. Um, I mean, it's getting in there, but uh, it's, it's a little harder with the spatula sometimes, uh, so I don't... I don't uh, have any problems just getting my hand right on in there and doing what I need to do. And as you can see, it's starting to come together here. Got 
sometimes, sometimes you just want to do this. Just grab your, uh, your dough scraper and just get the dough off your hand. And the only reason I want to do that right now, in my case, is just that it's a little bit sticky what's on my hand. So I want that to be in the dough uh, before it absorbs all the dry flour rather than on my hand and then mixing that in at the end. So as you can see, the dough is coming together into a big giant clump. Get that little piece in there. All right. Just see if I can scrape any excess off the sides here. Yeah. But it's coming along. I'm just about ready to call this an auto lease. Yeah. Give it some quick just to grab a few little dry spots I'm seeing because now now the whole dough has really absorbed the water it's together and it's starting to get sticky so I know it's just about right and do that one more time just to get that off my hand since you know it's better in the bowl than on my hand all right okay and now all we do is cover and let it rest for about an hour before we move on to the next step. All right, uh, we have let the the dough auto lease for an hour or so, and uh, we're moving on to the next step. And the next step is going to be to add the Levon, which is or starter, uh, which is looking really good. And, and like I said, I prepared it ahead of time. Um, this one has something like a 12-hour uh, timing on it because it used less starter uh, instead of a one to one to one mix that I normally do for sourdoughs this one had a, a bit less starter than that when I created it so it took a lot longer to get up there uh, so we're gonna add the Levon and then uh, about uh, half of the mixing water right now we're gonna mix that all together and then uh, we're going to do the other half of the water and the salt after that. Uh, about 10 minutes. We're going to let it rest and then we're going to do the rest of the water and the salt after that. And then the oil after that's all mixed in. All right. So let's get the Levon and the water in. And the nice thing about this Levon is it's the exact amount you need. So once again, props to the Perfect Loaf for setting up the recipe to make uh, the ingredients about right and uh, ready to go and just, you know, kind of... Put it all in and you're 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 good to go so let me just get the let me get that in there um it's the exact right amount so what i'm going to try and do is get every last bit of it out of here to the best of my ability to do so and then i will get the water in half of half of the water in all right so there's that just trying to get things out of the way there. All right, so right now we're just gonna mix all this together. You know what, I'm just gonna use my hands. It's gonna be easier than, than this. Let me get that here. Yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah, so I just wanna get the Levon completely incorporated in to the dough here with the water, get that all good. This is how we're going to start getting this a really nice and strong dough. As you can see right now, it, it, it feels very wet. Um, so I'm trying to use my fingers to really get more of a mix going until that gets absorbed a little bit better over the next minute or so while I do this. Um, and then, like I said, we're gonna have to let it rest once it's in there, which will be very soon because I'm starting to feel it be ready yeah All right you don't want to overwork the dough um, so I'm just trying to fold it in on top of itself now to make sure it's all there where it needs to be and I think it's about right so we'll just grab this last few all right just, if I can, uh, yeah just getting it off my fingers that's all all right so we're gonna let it rest for 10 minutes and then we'll be right back to finish the rest of the ingredient, get the rest of the ingredients in there. All right, it's been about 10 minutes and uh, we are, yeah, see, look at what resting the dough does. It really helps things just kinda 
get moving along. All right, so uh, the next step is to add the salt and the rest of the mixing water in uh, as the first part, and the second part uh, will be to get the walnut oil in, which is next. So let's do the salt first. And we're just gonna try and get that over the top as evenly as possible. All right, water. Uh, the water will make it easier to get the salt in there, but it will make the dough wetter, so keep that in mind if you're not used to working with very wet doughs. Uh, that is uh, That can be a challenge, as you saw earlier, how it sticks to my hands. Uh, I'm used to it, so it's not a big deal for me, but um, that's what happens as the dough starts sucking up the water. Now, the good news with the salt is the salt fights for resources inside of the dough, and that means that... Um, you know, things are gonna, the processes are gonna be a little slower. As you can see, I'm just kinda not really following a specific process right now, but that's because I feel all the salt in my fingers, uh, in, the, in between the dough and my fingers. And uh, there's still a lot of water in the bowl, so, <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to work it until it gets in there quite well. So let's do that. I mean, you can see it, it's, uh, the water is getting absorbed as I go through this. Um, I don't feel the salt anymore, which means that's, well, a little bit, but it's pretty well mixed in now. And it's going to get absorbed anyway, even if you miss a fleck or two here and there. Um, the main thing is, right now, is I can see it's, you know, there's still a lot of water. It's not sticking to my hand yet, so it's got a little ways to go to absorb that. Um, so I'll probably just keep working it a little bit here. Um, and you know, if you need to, you just rest it for a few, like a minute or two to let the water get in there. And then you move on to the next step. You don't you don't have to keep working the dough and working it. And in fact, with sourdoughs, if you work it too much, that's not a good thing. So we're just gonna get this where it needs to be. Cause it is almost ready. Yeah. Water's almost uh, entirely in now. It's starting to, it's not yet sticky, but I can, I, actually it's kind of starting to get sticky. So that's, that's good. Cause we got to get the oil in here as the next step. Um, which I think we are far enough. Yeah, the dough is coming together now. All right, so we are just about far enough for that. And it's pretty much this. You're gonna see me do start a, a I mean, I'm doing it now, but you're gonna see me really start doing the stretch and folds. Uh, as soon as I start putting the oil in, which uh, now is good. So let me just get that open. All right. So I'm going to incorporate the oil pretty much the same way where I'm trying to... Ooh, that, that stuck. See, that one stuck in my hand. Anyway, I'm trying to get the oil in by stretching a bit as I do this. Um to incorporate it into the dough better. And that, you know, it's oil, right? And it's a liquid, which means it's gonna be even wetter. So again, if you're not used to working with wet doughs, um, you know, take care and try not to freak out if it's too sticky. Um, you know, use the dough scraper to get it off your hand uh, if you need to. Um, I do that a lot, so it's not a big deal. Um, and just make sure that the oil, the water, the salt, and everything is mixed into the dough. Uh, um, I mean, right now there's only so much stretching and folding I can do because the dough, the gluten structure is not built out yet in the dough. It hasn't, you know, hasn't gotten there yet because it needs to rest first. So right now I'm just doing these steps to just to make sure that everything gets mixed in well enough, which it feels like it is. So I'm just going to kind of get the surface tension a little bit built up now that the dough is just a little bit stronger. And then I am going to cover it for half an hour. Actually, uh... I think what we'll do is we'll transfer to a bulk uh, fermentation container next. And then, um, yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. Cause now, now the dough has really come together. I can feel it now. I mean, the stretching and the folding is working. Uh, everything's mixed in, it's starting to get sticky again. So let's do that. Let's put it in my other container, my, uh, my bigger Cambro than the one I normally use cause I have more dough this time. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll leave it in there covered for half an hour and then we will uh, start our official 
official stretch and fold sessions. We'll do a couple of those and uh, and then do the bulk proof after that. All right, there we are. Honestly, that probably would have fit in my smaller camera, so sorry if it's uh, not great for the camera right now. Anyway, we'll be back in half an hour to start the uh, official stretch and fold process, which will include these, these lovely bad boys, the walnuts and the cranberries. All right, uh, it's been about half an hour and we are ready to do the first stretch and fold. Uh, I did put a rubber band on there. I forgot to do that before, so that happened off camera. However, uh, what we do right now is this. We start putting in the cranberry and the walnut and uh, we don't do it all at once. What we do is we put, um, I usually do about a third of them uh, right on top of the dough and then I start doing a, a complete revolution of stretch and folds. Then I do another third that basically repeat, wash, rinse, repeat, right? Another third and another third to finish it off. And then I'll close up again and, uh, for half an hour, let it rest, and then I'll go back into stretch and folds a couple more times, um, and then the bulk fermentation after that. So right now we're gonna do about a third. So if you see, we're, we're like here. So we'll take it down to something like there. Sorry, I'm not like measuring when I do that. I'm actually just trying to keep the mix somewhat even. <laughs> That's all I'm actually doing. And then, you know, we just want that over the surface there. And then it's just a pretty typical, and I forgot to wet my hand again, uh, a pretty typical stretch and fold process. In fact, um, my apologies, that's very sticky. I am gonna go wet my hands. All right. So, uh, here's where we're at. I, uh, I forgot to wet my hand, it's very sticky dough. So, uh, I'm just going back to finish this stretch and fold uh, set, and then we'll uh, get the rest of the cranberry and the walnut in there in just a moment as I get this included. Yeah, this still is a bit stickier than normal, so I am gonna keep my hand pretty wet here as I do this. All right, that was one complete turn. We're gonna do a bit more. Get a little bit more. Yeah, that's good for the last one. Just, you know, just trying to get a nice even mix of uh, all of the uh, cranberry and walnut for the inclusion. Okay, just doing another complete turn. And as you put more stuff into the bread when you do inclusions, like hard stuff anyway, because walnuts are very hard, <laughs> um, you can start to feel all of that. It gets, uh, you know, it's, it's a little more, oops, hello. It's a little more in there, but it gets uh, stiff, sorry, is what I was trying to say while I was doing that. Um, you can start to feel it, you know, moving around as you go as well uh, when you do the inclusions. And so now that there's more in there, uh, we're just going to get the rest. And really, I mean, this is a very hefty recipe on inclusions. There's a lot in here, so it's going to be going to be thoroughly in the dough everywhere. All right, but you know, you can still see as I do the stretch and folds to get it in and around that it's not yet mixed everywhere it needs to be. There's still big spots of dough that definitely, uh, definitely are missing inclusion. Like that part <laughs> is missing, missing an inclusion right now. So we're gonna just keep stretching and folding a little bit longer on this run just to get it a little more in there, but we're not gonna overdo it because the dough is getting hard to work with, meaning I need to stop. So yeah, in fact, that is good enough for right now and yeah perfect so we'll uh cover it where's the alert uh, <laughs> i couldn't find it all right we're gonna cover it up again and then we will be back in half an hour to do stretch and fold number two and uh this time i've got my water so <laughs> we'll be good all right all right it's been about half an hour since we uh added the cranberries and the walnuts and we're gonna do a series of stretch and folds to further include them and strengthen the dough this time I did remember to wet my hand. And uh, we'll see where we get. Yeah, this dough is a bit stickier than uh, normal sourdough loaves, um, probably due to the types of inclusions we have running on this one. 
but I can feel everything getting mixed in pretty well now everywhere, even if it does not appear that the stretch and folds are perfect, but uh, they are actually doing a great job on, with that. So I'm just giving it some little extra attention, even though I can't stretch and fold that much right now because it's getting very stiff on me, which means it's time to stop. All right. So we will be back in half an hour to do this one more time and then we'll finish the bulk proof. All right, it's been another half an hour and uh, we are gonna do the second or third set of stretch and folds uh, before we leave the dough to rest for about 90 minutes or so to finish, <clears throat> excuse me, to finish bulk proofing. So let's get the old hand wet and we're gonna get in here and do this. Uh, you may have noticed a little bit of bleed on some of those cranberries. That's perfectly normal. Even though they are dried cranberries, there's still, there's still a little hydration in there. Uh, plus, they've been soaking up some of the water from the dough. So, expect it. All right. And, uh, yeah, everything's pretty well mixed now, unlike, you know, when I first put them in. So, um, I think we've got a good, good mix structure going on in there. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the rubber band up just a tad, and we're gonna see how much more it rises in the next 90 minutes or so to make sure it is in fact ready. Other than that, we'll see you in a bit. All right, uh, we are done with the bulk fermentation, and uh, it is looking good. Uh, we are definitely just above where I was hoping we'd be on the, um, just on the rise. So, uh, it is, it is time, it is time. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna put a little flour on this, get it out of the container, put it onto the workbench. So for flour, we'll do a little sprinkle there, do a lot there, because this is a very wet dough. And then uh, I do need to do some stuff with the scale in a minute. So let me actually do this. All right, so we are going to get rid of this, first of all. Yeah, see, it's already sticking to my hands a lot. So let's do this and that just a little bit more. Yeah, that happens sometimes with these recipes. They're they're very wet or just whatever it is that day. They are just sticky, 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 sticky. This one is definitely sticky. I feel it all over my hands right now. So I'm gonna have to deal with that in a moment. Just get as much of this out as possible. See what I mean? It's all over my hand. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, now what we have here is enough dough, and just to try and get a little of this off my hands is I'm gonna rub it off, but we have a uh, enough dough to make two loaves, so we do need to split this in half and then shape two loaves, uh, pre-shape two loaves before we actually shape them and, and put them in the Vanatins. Yeah, see a lot of that stuck to my hand right there. All right. So uh, should be my hand should be clean enough for that. All right. So, first of all, yeah, see it's sticking to everything. Right now I'm just making sure it's not stuck to the countertop. All right. just a little bit to work with turn that on and some may freak out about the amount of flour I'm sprinkling around here but you know what I need the dough not to stick so <laughs> we're gonna and it's sticking a lot so yeah let's try that we are slightly off on the sizes, so I'm just gonna cut a small piece away there, give it to you. Actually, we were a little more off than I thought, so. Just, there we go, that ought to do it. All right. All right, that's one, that's two. We are very sticky today. Okay, all we are doing is getting the dough into a, uh, a round shape. All right, see, I got too much sticking to my hand right now, and that's part of the problem. 
All right, anyway, where were we? So we're just gonna get these into a round shape as best we can. I mean, these are stickier than my normal dough. Like, it's, it's actually quite a lot. All right, just kind of using the stickiness of the workbench a little to help me out. <laughs> Yeah, see, that is that is working, but the dough is very, very sticky. So what we are going to end up with is probably scraping it off of the counter later on uh, 30 minutes or so, or however long I think we end up needing here. Um, you can see there's these big bulges of where... Yeah. Big bulges of where the cranberry and the walnut is. All right, these are good. So what we're going to do right now, and um, I don't want it sticking to the cover, so I am flowering the tops a bit. Uh, we are just going to let them rest uh, on the bench here for a bit with a covered towel. And then we will be back to officially shape these and get them into the banatons. And we'll be back. Okay, we've been uh, bench resting for about half an hour. Hopefully that will make the dough more workable because it was very sticky before. And uh, we may need our bench scraper too while we're at it. Yeah, just hoping that was loose enough, but perhaps not. Mm, look at that. All right. All right, what we're gonna do is we are going to shape the dough and then place it in the banneton. It's actually not that bad, or at least it's not stuck to the table as bad as I thought it might be. All right. I'm just gonna kinda clear the path a little bit from earlier, make some space here. All right. And what we're gonna do is uh, just stretch the dough out as such. Bit of a triangular form. There we go. So on this one, got a <laughs> runaway cranberry there. <laughs> on this one, I think what we're gonna do is we're not gonna focus too hard on, you know, putting as much tension in as possible because this dough is still, I mean, it's very wet still for me. Yeah. So what I'm gonna try and do here, this is the bottom and I'm just trying to stitch it closed a bit and get it about as close as I can. And we're gonna let the basket do a lot of the work on the proofing side, keeping the tension in place and everything we need to do there. Cause this is in fact very, very sticky. So we now have a banneton and yeah. Just gonna put it in there and just Make sure it's filling out the basket well enough. And uh, I do line the baskets beforehand with rice flour, even though I'm using a, uh, a linen in there. Um, it just helps make sure that nothing sticks. All right, so once again, we are going to stretch that out a bit. But like I said, like if uh, I just don't want too much of a problem in there with uh, stickiness, so. I am just trying to get it enough shape and in fact what I'll even do is this just kind of roll it rock it side by side on this one and make the stitching job a little easier this time well in theory anyway a little easier because it's not holding itself closed when I do that so we'll see what happens but we do have some good dough here it's just a little sticky and uh, that is to be expected with a dough like this yeah So again, with that, it's we're trying to stitch the bottom clothes as best we can. We do have some stuff hanging out. Getting that banneton ready, I'm just trying to make sure it'll fit okay in the basket and look all right, which it does. It does look pretty good there. All right, so all I'm gonna do, get that in there. All I'm gonna do is cover, and then we're gonna put this in the fridge for proofing overnight.
All right, we are uh, preheating the oven. Uh, I have a steam oven, so uh, my temperature and my temperature settings are a little different. If you're using a Dutch oven, on the other hand, um, again, the settings are a little different. Just check the description down below. I set it up so that um, if you have a steam oven, do it one way, and if you have a Dutch oven or just right, you know, whatever you're using, uh, do it the other way. So let me get the loaves out of the fridge. We're gonna score them, and then we're gonna put them in the oven to bake. All right, let's see, this is number one, and yeah, it filled out pretty nicely in there. And number two, almost just as good. Now, um, I'm, you don't need parchment paper, I'm just using it because of what I'm doing today. For me, it's gonna be a little easier. So the way I do that normally is something like this, right? If I'm doing, say, a single loaf. So what I will do in exchange for that today, because I'm doing a double loaf situation, <laughs> is this. One of those, and one of those. And the bread does come right on out. Makes a little mess in my linen, but that's all right. I mean, that's what these baskets are for. Okay, let me get a brush real quick. Uh, I don't like to leave extra flour on there, and it looks like I kind of had a lot of extra rice flour inside of the uh, inside of the uh, baskets. So just gonna get that out of here. And then we'll score it real quick and we will get it in the oven for baking. All right, just get that. Don't want to bake the just flour like that on the, uh, in the oven, it just burns. So there's no point to that. Particularly if you're doing pizzas, but we're not doing pizza today. All right, I think that's all that. All right, for the scoring, I am using BreadSmart uh, double-sided scoring lom. I'm just going to use the uh, straight edge today instead of the curved one. And I'm just going to do a singular cut down each loaf when I do it. Uh, no special patterns today or anything. Uh, just keeping it simple. And going all the way through like that. And on this side, all the way through like that again as well for the other one. And sometimes I've noticed this happens to me, so I just kind of get in there try to fix it if I can but actually I know why it happened on that one because there was something in there <laughs> that's all right okay that's really all you got to do with these and then uh, one thing I like to do makes it a little easier for me when I'm uh, loading the oven is I just do this uh, I get a piece of shovel and uh, because it's very hot I'm gonna put the gloves on I just get a piece of shovel and that's that all right I'm gonna put these in the oven and we're gonna bake look pretty good yeah these did real well all right well okay so I'm gonna let these cool and then um, we'll cut one open see how it turned out on the inside but these look pretty good these look pretty good Alright, the bread is cooled and uh, I've gotten out a cutting board so we can slice it open and see how we did, but uh, this is just one of the loaves, but they uh, they both look, I'll try and get the sound in there, kind of a little hollow when you hear that, I don't know if I picked up on the mic too well, but they both look good, they both rose well, and they seem like they did really good in the oven, so let's get cutting. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. A lot of good air in there. The uh, good distribution of all of the uh, all the ingredients. Uh, sorry, inclusions. <laughs> yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, now I'll cut a slight couple of slices here, just to, just so we can see how it turns out. 
And then uh, my wife is going to eat it because I made this for her. So hopefully she likes it. I, uh, I'm actually using one of my less sharp knives. So of course it's getting a little stuck on the crust there. But it is cutting pretty well. And I'm losing some of my cranberries as we go. <laughs> but yeah, we'll be all right. All right, I'm going to finish slicing this. And then uh, I'll see what I can do to present. All right, I'm gonna just cut the half and then uh, do a little presentation action here. I'll even make it really nice. Okay, so I sliced uh, half of one loaf uh, just to show you how it turned out. It looks really good. Uh, a lot of air in there, uh, good distribution of, um, of all the inclusions of the walnut and the cranberry. Uh, I think my wife is going to love it. She, uh, she likes these kind of breads with these kind of ingredients in them. So uh, when she gets around to eating it tomorrow, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure we are going to do great on this one. Okay, well this is what it looks like. Uh, if you are making this at home, I do hope, uh, I do hope you go to the perfect loaf. Uh, check out the recipe on Maurizio's site. Uh, it's another winner as far as I'm concerned, and uh, enjoy. Before we wrap up, let's go over some things that might help with your baking. Number one, is it starter or Levon? You may hear different terms for the same thing, Levon or starter for example. I commonly refer to the Levon in my breads as a starter, as do many others out there. However, many bakers clarify that they make the Levon from the starter for the bread dough. They're essentially the same thing, but the Levon is meant to be used for baking while the starter is needed to create the Levon that is going to be used for baking. Starter is also referred to as mother yeast by some bakers as well. Number two, let sticky dough rest. If you find a dough is getting sticky and hard to work with, just get it into a little bit of shape and then cover with a towel, let it rest for 15 minutes, then come back and it should be much easier to work with. Number three, stretch and fold techniques. I find it easy to use the tartine style of stretching and folding for loaves like this, but you can also pick up the dough in the center, let the ends fall under the loaf as you place it down, then turn 90 degrees and do it again. That is also a very effective method, as is the slap and fold technique you may sometimes see others use in their doughs. Try the different styles until you find one that works best. Number four, dough shaping methods. On this one, I was using my normal method of stretching the dough out, folding it over, rolling the dough together like a pillowcase, and stitching the seams closed. But I found that on the second loaf, it was easier to let the dough stick to the work surface a little and roll the tension into it before stitching the seams closed. The results of doing it this way was evident with the second loaf getting a more pronounced ear when I baked the loaves. Number five, get a good scoring lom. I was using my BreadSmart lom, which makes it super easy for me to score the dough effectively and get good results. Invest in either a BreadSmart Lom or the UFO Lom if you want an easier time scoring bread loaves. The others just don't compare to those two scoring Loms. That's it for this time. Go ahead and give this recipe a try. And check out some of my other videos too. Until next time, happy baking.